It is a Friday on the East Coast. I got my good friend Jared here. Hello, Jared. How you doing? Good evening. How you doing? Great. Did you have a great week? As good as you can get. Nice. We got a lot of things, so we're just going to get to it. Because that's the motto around here. Get to it! <laughs> Don't bore us. Show us the chorus. So, uh, cartooning is back this week. Excellent. I've been feeling great, so I decided to bring back one of my old favorites. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's right? throw that in there. Yeah, I think we should. It's nostalgic. <laughs> now, the theme is class in the 80s. Does that take you back? Too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, he happened to actually be in this room, in this class, that it is inspired by, I don't know about in the third grade, do you remember Mrs. Scanlon? I remember the name, yes. This old lady, yep. happy most of the time, but like instantly angry out of nowhere, right? I do remember <laughs> that, yep. <laughs> One day, somebody made a stupid remark or wasn't listening. She took her glasses and went smash on the table. <laughs> oh, that's all I need to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> somebody could get in trouble for that today. <laughs> oh, I know. But, you know. I, I didn't pay attention in class. I don't know about you, but it was the most boring thing. And I love learning. I paid attention to everything, you including do. you not paying attention. Wow. <laughs> 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 well, let's roll the clip. Excellent. What's going on, everybody? Hello. <laughs>
Who would have thunk it, right? <laughs> in I second grade. <laughs> That's what I was going for. All right, let's get this chat going here so we can see it. Hey, Rody's get Jam K. What's going on, Johnny Bean? So, um, we're gonna get this show over at eight because Johnny Bean has a show at eight, and I never miss it. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, and um, Johnny's show, interesting. He had on um, Al John Go. Now, if you don't know who Al John Go is, I'm gonna tell you. He's a product manager at. Gibson slash Kramer slash Epiphone. Now, if you look at my beautiful inspired by Gibson Epiphones, those are his projects. Like, he literally nice. worked with the, the team, you know, decided, let's let's really up the, the Epiphones. Inspired by Gibson, they changed the shape of the headstock a little bit so they're closer to the, uh, yep, the, the Gibsons. Yeah. And they're amazing. And I... On Johnny's show, I thank you, Johnny, for letting me do this. I put a comment in. I told him thanks for the project and thanks the team. He read the comment. I w it's like made my week. <laughs> it was awesome. awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, I, see you, I see your bros here. Hey, hey <laughs> Dave, what's going on, man? I'll see you Hi, this Dave. weekend, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got Dave in the chat. Nice. David B., we got Michael B, David B, and Jared C. So, Jared, welcome. What are we doing today? Well, it's gonna take. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the last resort uh, film we made. I think it was back in two thousand seven. Wait a minute. This is a music channel. You mean we're not? We we did you other things film besides music. Have music. We started playing music when we were twelve. <laughs> That's right, we did. In yeah. your kitchen. In the kitchen. ACDC. Yep, yep. and. Uh, but we are multi-creative around here, so I believe it. Yeah, uh, ventured into other things. Yep. And uh, films being a pretty big chunk, a big chunk of creative energy that went into those <laughs> <laughs> in our uh, wayward thirties, I believe. Yep. <laughs> so we have a ton of film projects, basically to rehash, have fun with, basically react to for the first time in ten years. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been uh, it's been a while. Yeah. Yep. So we're gonna. Oh, he's meet. All right, Johnny's meeting with Al John in Nashville in in January. Yes, that is cool, Johnny. We will be all subscribing and watching for that. That is amazing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Johnny is an amazing player. Um, all the the Van Halen fandom. You if you like Van Halen even a little bit, you got to go there. <laughs> all right. So nice. let's uh let's play a last resort, and we're gonna react to it. So we're gonna like jump in. Yep, you know, with comments as we go. And if you guys are good, maybe we'll play the film at the end, like, in its entirely, entirety. But I have a, a brush with stardom in this film. That's correct. Now, one thing, the first thing I want to say is this is the first time I stepped up to produce. And it was tough. You know, I don't, I still didn't really produce it by myself. I it, With Jared and Jason... You know, they were co-producing <laughs> because I didn't know how to do everything. <laughs> um, this was my first rodeo, and there was a brush with stardom. So let's, uh, with that teaser, let's start it. Now, let, I'm just going to test to see if it continues. This is a technical thing that we're learning live. <laughs> One of you YouTube veterans are playing a clip in a movie. We want to pause it and keep going, but I think we're going to have to set up a whole different setup to do that. So we might change gears and just play the fucking thing. What do you think? Um, that that beginning text you saw there, that sets up the, the mind idea. Beside. No, not the mind beside. Past the uh, okay past the title. Yes, the actual text uh, where it says on a world just like our own. Mm -hmm. That sets up the idea that this is delving into fantasy a little bit. It's Absolutely. not uh, 
but it gives you that instant recognition that you will be somewhere else. And I'm going to give props to the original writer of the story, yeah, uh, Phil, Phil Temples. Phil Temples, yeah. He, uh, Great he writer. Originally as a, um, a sci-fi. Yeah, animation and, heavy. Uh, and we, we changed that. Well, we can't do animation. We, yeah, we didn't do it. <laughs> we didn't do animation. And sci-fi would be in a total different realm of setup and production and what have you. Right. Uh, so we, uh, we went more for uh, a bit more historical fiction type yeah. thing. And I think we adapted it fairly well. And you're the screenwriter, I that's believe. That's that's correct. Yeah. You're the screenwriter. All right. So yeah. let's play the let's play the film because without that, there's nothing to talk about, right? So and it was fun go. to adapt. So it was. Uh <laughs> my cannons up to that ridge. Why'd you do that? Because you guys are down in that field there. But you can't see those guys. They're right there. No, look, the hill hides them from your artillery. Well, then they just decided to go up there anyway. Fine. Perhaps a spy gave away their position. A military operation involves deception. Just have to bring my forces in here. Ooh, I'm gonna crush you. Draw them in with the prospect of gain. Take them by confusion. Only a fool would fall for that. Oh no! Let's do something else. Why? Do you know any real soldiers? Not like these guys, but real enlisted men. Um, well I think one of my cousins is in the cavalry. The 11th or the 21st? I have no idea. He said they were at the Battle of Sherman last year. That would be the 21st. Yeah, he said half their platoon died. He's in prison now, something about stolen boots. My father told me wars are ugly things, a last resort. Military action is important to the nation. If the people want it. The people should trust in what their leaders want. <laughs> ever see any of our other friends? Not with the classes, training, and other stuff. They'd just get all weird. Hey, I know. Let's sneak out after dinner tonight. I know a way under the wall that nobody's found yet. Rue, don't you understand? I can't do that stuff anymore. I have responsibilities. A thousand- Shut up! Not you, too. You're the only real friend I've got, okay? Sorry. Use anger to throw them into disarray. Stop that! <coughs> we have more important matters at hand. Yes, time to go, Ru. Of course. We'll need more forces at this point. Can we hold the line for the day? Of course. I have my doubts. Do not doubt, and one day you'll have enough to drive them back. How? Once you take the valley, you'll be reinforced. We'll sacrifice too many men with such bait. That won't leave any forces for me. Uncle, how many men in that prison where Ruth's cousin is held? At least 3,000. Give them the semblance of soldiers and deploy them to the valley at the appropriate time. What do I tell them? Whatever you need to. I'll be in my rooms. It's barbaric. Battles are lost or won before they are fought. This will give us victory. Then you can give the orders!
Oh, man. Oh, wow. That, that, that <laughs> cuts right out. <laughs> that's uh, great. That's pretty tense. <laughs> I haven't seen that in so long. <laughs> I uh, made my wife watch it last week. <laughs> Excellent. Actually, as you should. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, wow, I was hoping to do some commentary while it was going on. But yeah. The, um, We'll figure that out for next time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, what I liked about it is we set up, uh, in the very beginning, we set up our our favorite victim as a soldier running through the woods. Otherwise, other, otherwise known as, in real life, Dan Smith. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, Hi, Danny. Yeah, Dan, yeah, I hope he's watching. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, he's a uh, – uh, we've worked with him before. He's uh, – He's come th- through for us in jam many times for uh, playing a good part in movies, and um, so we set him up as the soldier in the beginning, running through the f- running through the battle. You hear the sounds of the battle, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, you cut right to the uh, the excellent uh, battleground tabletop that you you made. Yes. Yeah, that yeah, was er- really cool. Uh, Mrs. Michael B. and I made that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, there so were some toxic metals in there too, and glues and things. And found out like after, oh. like oh, we weren't supposed to be using this. It was like lead <laughs> and all this other stuff that was toxic. Ah, uh, lead. So paint, I didn't, I didn't figures? hang on to any of it. It's all gone. Oh, good. <laughs> so now it's poisoning some uh, water hole somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I but didn't make the figures. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, so anyway, we transitioned to that that battlefield that you made. Which was cool because that it had the, like the little greens and stuff in it, which kind of you know fit with the forest theme that the soldier was running yeah. through, but it also um, it also made that soldier running through the forest it turned him into a thing rather than a person, mm. and that's part of the theme of the film yeah. is that soldiers are things that the uh, you know the up Uppers right. move around at their will. Like a pawn. A pawn. Yes, they're pawns. In an evil game. <laughs> exactly. Uh, just like, you know, when we play Risk or uh, Axis and Allies and stuff like that. Right, but I'm not killing my friend's uncle. Um, that is true. You're not killing me. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, but it, I was too happy to kill my be- one of my best friends on the battlefield. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> In the movie. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, so that, but that's, you know, that's the running theme going through there is the decisions that uh, people in power make at the expense of of the little people. Right. And, uh, and so that, I thought that was uh, um, a, the strength of the movie right there was that, that opening. It's kind of like, kind of like a prologue, and your prologue is so right. important. And that through line was in the original story we based it on. Yep, it was. So, yep. and I wanted to keep. Phil's themes that he had right. as, you know, that that was a connecting uh, adaptation, was to f- right. keeping his themes while adapting it to uh, our setting. Right, 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 right. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, up in, up in the dialogue for acting rather than, you know, inner monologue, short story. But um, so that's what I had to do on, on my end. And uh, uh, probably a good time to mention um, – that's uh, Emily Pike, uh, actress, yep. and Jake. Jake, uh, we'll have to look. I, I don't yeah, remember his and last Jake, name. it's in the it's in the credit. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jake. We uh, um, Matt. Matt Scott. Matt cousin, Scott. My cousin Matt. And, and then the, the one and only. And the uh, our executive producer and actor. Yep. For many extraordinary stuff, <laughs> including some of the films you're going to see coming. Uh, up. was my brother Jason. Yep. And. Uh, Hopefully, uh, maybe we can get him on here one day too. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. Well, we got all this internet remote, you know. Well, Johnny's gotta go get ready. So. All right, Johnny, we'll see you in a bit. Nice to cool, meet you, man. dude. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, yeah. So uh, we're uh, so yeah, we had Jason there, and um, Emily, we actually uh, auditioned, mm-hmm. and um. What was the other kid's name? She's very talented. Jake something. Yeah. Jake. We, uh, we, uh, we auditioned for both of them. We wanted that for the for the king role. We wanted that boy king look. Um, right. 
you know, because that way the weight of responsibility on a on a boy is much more um, heavy than it would be on somebody who's been ruling for years. And so that made his decision that more that much more uh, impactful. Yeah. Um, and uh, and em- yeah, Emily is extremely talented. We saw Very some talented. some clips of her and other stuff, and she's was doing like musicals and yeah. Uh, She's so very talented. We were very fortunate to get her, yep. um, and her mother, who did the makeup. She did makeup. Yeah, that's so right. that was great. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then uh, I- interesting sidebar: Jeff uh, plays a little part in one of the, uh, the Bone Scar songs. Um, oh, it, it probably isn't going to end up being a Bone Scar song. It could be a, one of mine. Uh, um, he plays guitar, in, so her dad plays guitar in one of my things. Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Um, it's a small world, right? Wow. A yeah. bunch of talented, talented family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Um, Sorry. Sir. It, it, and didn't we also have, as our sound technician, uh, Jeff Crocker? Jeff Crocker. Yeah. Absolutely. Who, He's in the business, so yep. to speak. He, he actually did sound tech for NASCAR uh, right. at the time we made the film. Right. And uh, he was here on vacation. And we yes. we scooped them up <laughs> to do the film with. Wow! <laughs> and uh, the location, do you want to? Is that a good oh, time yeah. to talk about that? Yeah, that yeah. is Boston College. Yep. The and yep. the original writer of the story that this is based on, Phil Temples, um, I think he worked there, or had previously worked there, or, or he yeah, did work there. He definitely had a connection somehow. Um, and it's a very very nice building yeah. that we were allowed to not wreck. And hopefully we yeah. did left no <laughs> trace. Yeah, it was a, like a historical building, right? Yeah, yeah. It's very, very, very nice. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, yeah, we had to be careful because it's. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys are familiar with filmmaking. There's a lot of setup. There's a lot of equipment. Right. And um, even for the one indoor location with only a couple of different angles. Yep. Like. Yep. You know, we we had to set up lighting pretty much just one time. That's correct. Yeah. And yeah, we got we, the different angles off of that. Yeah, we had a few different angles in there, um, as you saw. But uh, uh, the main angle, um, and we had to set the lights to, to – and that was a one of the things I wanted to mention about the lighting was um, we purposely kept the soldiers in the dark, as yes, you saw. Yes, towards the beginning. Um, and they were kind of just disembodied voices at first. Well, they're subservient, too, to the, to the king. Yep. And, which uh, you don't know at the time. Right. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so that was that was all part of the. I mean, I know I've heard from some other people that they complained about the darkness, yeah, uh, um, in the film, but that was done on purpose because we didn't want them quite revealed yet and towards yeah. till later on. Yeah. And uh, so that I thought that worked out pretty well. Absolutely. And then we had on the camera, um, Lawrence Doc. Yes, right. Absolutely, from the screenwriters group. Yes, yep. Which is what spawned a lot of this, or came out of some of it and spawned a bunch more. Yeah, he. Uh, so yeah. he was. Uh, he was very, very cool to work with, yes. and I liked Doc a lot. Um, Filmar, yeah. He did what they call it cinematography or whatever. Cinematography. He ran yep. the camera. Ran the camera. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some other things we'll talk about in a minute, which epic. I'm gonna pull up a picture and I'm gonna show the screen. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, that, that went into that, uh, and we um, the uh, let's see. I'm trying to think some more points in the on the story. It's uh, you know it's only five minutes long the film, uh, so we uh, filmed it in two days basically, one day outside, yeah. one day inside. Yes, and now can we talk about the the big. The, this is the, the teaser I gave to everybody was this is about a brush with stardom oh yeah yep. and a helicopter a helicopter so which should we go first <laughs> you uh, the well, helicopter I'm gonna uh, find that I, I forget who set that up was it Jason that got that Jason or your yeah. dad oh yeah that's right it was my your dad. dad my dad knew uh knew somebody who could fly a helicopter of all things and uh <laughs> Because I had, you know, the game pieces at the beginning, I had the the thought that because you always plan more than you can handle, I wanted to pull out of the game board. Yeah. 
and That's and right. then you were you would transition into the the outside shot with the helicopter going up. Yeah. So Doc, Mr. Doc Prine, you are amazing, Larry. We love you. Strapped himself to the side of the helicopter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, literally, we <laughs> strapped him on the side of the outside of the helicopter, <laughs> risking life and limb, <laughs> holding the camera. And he was cool and calm, like he's a tough guy. But you could tell, like this was not oh, yeah. anything he had ever done. Yep, that so was. Uh, I'm we sure. We floated him up, floated him up, and got the the shot. It's too shaky. There's there was no destabilizing or any like small yeah. segment of it or even yeah. pictures we could take off. We it. tried, we really tried. Oh, <laughs> Jason, Jason really wanted that to work. Yeah, so did I. I mean, she's just, uh, just like. Well, I mean, I paid for the helicopter. So, so awesome, you know. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, that was a uh, a tough uh, tough thing to pull off on a, on our kind of budget. So. And what year did what year was the film? I think it's two thousand seven or six. Yeah. So if I go back in my picture catalog here to two thousand six, well, let's take a look. And let's see if we. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see. So what did what did we do anything with the helicopter that ended up in the final movie? Uh, I'd have to look again because I could tell you if there was any of those shots in there. Yeah. Um, because I th- I thought there was a one at least one above shot. Um, but uh, the uh, yeah, the helicopter and um, and we also had uh, that was out in the woods out by uh, up in Salem, New Hampshire, somewhere where we shot that. It seemed really far to drive. It was to. far away for us. Um. Yeah, we had. But uh, you know, we had, we had Danny, yep. um, on the ground, in yep. the woods, flown up from South Carolina. Flo- just for this. We flew him up just for the project, uh, because he is our preferred victim, <laughs> and yep. uh, and good actor. Yeah. And uh, we had, um, yeah, all the people in the woods and stuff, and you know, we, we and we had to find the right places to film that stuff. I, you know, he. With him jumping over the log, rolling around the ground, yeah. all that had to be planned out. So it was uh, it was a full day of filming just for those twenty seconds we got him. Yeah, in the, and in it, the movie. including the makeup. Although the opening sequence is also like I consider that Uh-oh. like a. Uh, Janice, hey Janice. <laughs> all right, cool. Thanks for checking in, Janice. It'll be up. You know, you can watch it later. Thank you, and we'll see you in the chats. Um. Yeah, the opening sequence with Danny running, where we cut back and forth. That was, that probably took up quite a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of running. Uh, that's that's what we hired him for to run around. <laughs> 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 and then go do the speed up and fly. Yep. Uh, yep. And uh, that, that was cool, though. We, uh, I don't at the, the very end of the movie. You see, you see the little dog tag on the bottom of his boot. Yes, um, and the date is not for a particular yes day. That, it's actually but those numbers. Uh, the engraver actually screwed up when they engraved them in the dog tag. It wasn't supposed to be separated like that. It was supposed to be just one number, um, but they they split them up for some reason because those numbers are actually Danny's birthday. Yeah, and so yep. Uh, I don't know why they. Uh, so the, that's that, the significance but, of the tag. But that was his, you know, his, uh, his, uh, you know, dog tag soldier number, what have you. Right. And it's kind of like a calling card. It was actually, uh, no, it's actually his prisoner number. His prisoner number, yeah. yes. Um, so because yep. in the story, the king uses these prisoners as frontline soldiers as a distraction to order to, in order to win the battle that they, uh, they were going to there. Um, and that was the uh, the young king's idea, which horrified the older general, and um, the uh, the 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 practical general that wanted to win. The well, the other <laughs> one was just the other one was just a. Uh, I don't know if you noticed his head was all powdery and white. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like a sycophant. 
you know. Ah. He was, he was the suck up to the king. <laughs> and, uh, everything. If you notice, everything the king said, he was comment upon, and you know, be like, "Yes, see, see, sir, you're always right, sir." You know, kind of. Yeah. Kinda yes, like man. Uh, except for a little bit better authority, I'll give it a little credit there. But uh, if you don't say so yourself, I, I agree, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, and uh, it was always uh, Jason's character who had the general uniform on. Right. And the big the big Civil War beard, kind of like what I got going right now. And um, he uh, he was the one who was always like, well, we can't do this. We got to do this. And had more of a kind of a bit more of a honorable stance towards fighting and battles and stuff like that. Yeah. Even though he was the one who was portrayed as the uh, guy always disagreeing in the room. Right. You know, and so we had that dichotomy and to, uh, you know, it's always a good, I like to always offset stuff, you know, and try to, right. you know, it makes it, it gives it more character. It gives it uh, mm-hmm. the uh, the character a bit more uh, depth. So I got a question because I don't know a lot about this set dress. Okay. When you do the pull out at the end, when the king is walking off, you now know he got the robe on, mm-hmm. got the, the crown, and he's walking towards the, the room. I'll be in my quarters. You mm-hmm. know. The camera pans out, and there's a certain painting on the wall. Oh, yeah. Do you know anything about the painting? Oh, yeah. That, um, well, actually, if originally you saw him putting on the robe, mm-hmm. there was another painting behind him there. It was harder to see. I think if you saw it like on a, on a big screen, right. it would be a lot more clear. Uh, but that was actually a painting of an older looking ma- gentleman right wearing those same robes right um and that's supposed to represent his father mhm who's obviously gone now because uh he um he wouldn't be king yeah he wouldn't be king <laughs> otherwise right uh, unless there's something else the fair is going on we don't know about long live the king <laughs> So, and he, um, yes, and he walks across the other side um, while, you know, while those two guys are standing out there, you know, like, right. like uh, good subjects. And, of course, he walks <laughs> by a picture of himself as king. Yeah. And, uh, so how did we, how did we, come, how did, how did we find a picture? painting? I think uh, Jason painted. He, well, I think he had a photo that he painted stuff over or something yes. like that. But he, he did some kind of melange, special effects, yeah, to make it a painting with a picture and yeah. some paint on it. Yeah, and it, it he made had it the frame, so we did hang right. the frame up. But um, and he did some kind yeah, of compositing of stuff. Yeah, something like otherwise. that. Yeah, he did he did some movie magic. He did. <laughs> so that was uh, very well done. We got Herb of. Fireside Studio, yeah. welcome. So we're talking about the cool movie man. A Last Resort that we did. Yes, the film A Last Resort. It was just played. Um, you know, I'll about probably play it again at the ago. end. Yep, yep, we played it. Just at the so end. in case anybody wants to see it again, because we no, wanted to stop, react to it, but the streamer doesn't allow you to do that. It starts the video over again. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to set up OBS or something for next week. Yeah. Uh, so Michael, now you can tell us about the score you Whew. got for the score. <laughs> All right, so we had done. At least three at this point. We did a feature length because we're stupid. Yep. And then we did at least two, I can think of, short films. Yep. Outside of Pittsburgh and Virtue. Virtue. Yep. Way of the Modern Samurai. Yeah, that's right. um, and then we did this one. So we kind of all, like, to make it fun, we kind of, like, switch roles. So this one I did producing. But in the past ones before that, I did the musical score with everybody. It was, you know, it was always more or less a collab, uh, especially on the feature, because there's just so much work. Um, And we had all done a band previous, of course, right? (laughs) It's all incestuous. But um, so I was doing the score for this one, but I also. What's that? It's from Sex with Sammy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the opening piece um, in the woods of Danny running through the soldier running through the woods, um, that's me. But I was also 
casually, and I think I only got three by the time I was finished, I took keyboard lessons because I wanted to be a little bit better each film that we did. You know, I started out on the first film where by the end of the film I could play with two hands, but there's some parts where I was playing with one hand and then I'd go do the second part with the other hand. <laughs> and then there's parts earlier in the film where I drew them in with the mouse. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of cool. But So I, I really wanted to do this lifelong thing that I've wanted to learn keys with better. So I met T. Lavitz of the Dixie Dregs because he was in the Boston area. And yeah. Became friends, and I started taking lessons from him. But honestly, we had to go over to his house. We'd shoot the shit for a couple hours of people we knew or cool music or projects, and he'd show me what was going on. Yeah. Um, Great keyboardist. Oh, man. Yeah. He's always doing some cool stuff. And another story we'll tell on another day is he also knows um, Sean in, in Melancholy Circus, the band I play bass in. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> he knows Sean for this almost exact same story. But T wanted to get into more stuff. So I'm producing this one and doing the score. It was a lot of work. So I was like, great, you want to help with this one? So, and we and I scored it from front to back, you know, with the edit that Jason mm -hmm. gave yep. me. Um, and I scored, I stopped after the run, and I said, well, here's a good scene change. Why don't you tackle the, 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 the real emotional stuff in the middle with the dialogue, you know? And then I took ov back over on the... On the when you pull out from the to the general, oh right, yep. To the and, uh, you know to that's the me yeah. again when it gets tense. And I think I did put some string beds underneath his um, his stuff too because he used a triton, a cork triton, and I thought the orchestration was kind of fake sounding, but in no way anything I could ever play myself. So like <laughs> in that middle, it's really good. The score is really good in the middle, and it's because T did it. You know. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pleasure to listen to. Uh, Herb of the Fire has a question here. <laughs> All right, so it says, I had to buy stickers for my keyboard. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, I don't think it's cheating it if it helps you, man. I think that's great. So I still need those lessons, but unfortunately, T passed away a few years back. But now that he has, now I can tell the full story. Oh. Well. Oh, there's more. He owed me for a, a bunch of lessons. So what we negotiated was he wanted to get into film. I said, T, why don't you help me with the score? And we'll, s we'll scrap the, the lessons. He was making an album at the time. He had gigs all over, you know, New York, New J you know, Long Island. And, you know, because it's promoting the album. So he's really busy, but he w he felt bad about the lessons. So I said, just, it's a wash. Just do it, right? No problem. Like, I was happy. He was happy. And he was finally getting into a new medium that he had been wanting to get into. So I was psyched. Oh, yeah. I was psyched, too, when you told me. <laughs> right. Until it came time to to do the credit. Now, this is something I would never talk about while he was alive, but. I had never dealt with a professional at that level, you know, Grammy nominated artist, right. yeah. been on Jay Leno's um, Tonight Show. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, not nobody. And I mean, music, Jared and I had just like two years before saw him in concert yeah. with the Dixie Dregs opening for Dream Theater, yeah. you know. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> I, I have a hard time with time. But. Yeah, it was you know I mean this guy was not nothing, yeah. and we had become friends. We and we had been designing a dot com um, site to learn where because he knew a lot of musicians, and it was too early in the internet and too early like YouTube hadn't been a thing, so we we're like, how do you price it? And we figured it out. We named the thing. We started making it. He reached out to his musician friends, and it was too early, and they all said, no, Hal Leonard's got me locked up. Every single musician he knows that was going to come into this platform and be a learning platform that are huge now. Like, if we had done it right. then, we would be one of them, be for sure, first. unless we screwed it up. Yeah. We wouldn't be quite the first, but yeah. close, close, pretty close. And I wanted to do microtransactions. 
he wanted to do longer form because he wanted to pay the musicians real money. Ah. He didn't realize at the time, you know, how a little bit of money 10,000 times is way better and easier to get than a higher fee for a much smaller amount of people and then higher labor to deliver training to those people live. So we kind of wanted to cross this bridge between the two. But anyway, we would have figured that out. But all the musicians were like, no, we can't do any kind of training because Hal Leonard has us locked up. Wow. You know, I mean, Hal Leonard, the books, the CDs, the DVDs, you know, that those people still had them locked up at the time. So we never did it. But when we came <laughs> time to do wow. the credits. <laughs> the okay, industry. Now, Jason's editing, and he's like, okay, where do I put the credits? And I'm the producer. I have to give him that list. And A, I forgot um, Emily's mom <laughs> for the for the for the, um, the makeup. I didn't forget it, but yeah. I didn't give it to Jason in time for him to put it in. Ah. So that's on me. Um, but I, you know, I did give it to him, but not in time. That didn't show up. But that the other mistake was T didn't like. I just emailed T and I said, "Hey, here's the credits. Here's the score. I put T. Labitz and Michael Belanger. And that's all I did was the and." Right, he wouldn't have it. He just would not have it. He and even though we did fifty-fifty score, it didn't matter. He was like, "No, I I can't do that." And I was <laughs> like, "Okay," and I didn't freak out. You know, you I'm like, share? he did not want the contraction with his name first and my name in the credit. It was for musical score, and I was like, "Okay, cool, dude." All right, I'll get back to you. So I reached out to anybody I could think of that I knew in the music business and said, hey, how do I how do I properly do this so that I don't upset the guy, but also so I understand where he's coming from as a, pro as a professional, and I'm not. You know what I mean? They're just some kid. Right, yeah. You know, some 30-something he just met. And, yeah, I did three movie scores, and he hadn't done any, but that they were nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's a pro musician that we didn't knows make how money. to play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just some kid, you know. So th basically, our friend Cece, Chris, came back, best drummer ever that I know. He said, try with. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I wrote back, and, you know, I agonized for like three days over this because I had to get Jason the final list. And he's like, yeah, that works. <laughs> and like not even a blink not upset about it at all I'm just like yeah that's cool I mean really it, it is and I mean I <laughs> I did more I minute wise I did more score than he did his is better it's shorter doesn't sound as good because it's a triton and I couldn't even get it he was so busy I couldn't even get the midi file to try to put patches behind it well you know there has been holy wars over conjunctions so I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, hey. <laughs> and I honestly, I'm humble. Like, I don't I don't need to elevate myself to his level. I was just thinking about my project. <laughs> right? Wow. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and also, I, I was friends with the guy. I didn't want to, you know, overstep yeah. my bounds if, if something's not right. Like, you know, he's old school. He started in the 70s. You know what I mean? He was in a pro band signed in the late 70s. Right. He knows things I'll never know. So I, I, you know, deferred to that. But I couldn't believe it. The one change, and to with, and you'll see it in the credit when you roll it, but it's yeah. fine. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, you know? It, it, it makes for a great story now. <laughs> it really does. So I haven't, awesome. <laughs> I've never, I've hinted at that story over the years, and I've never told it because I didn't want to yeah. sound like I was yeah. bitter. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I love the whole experience. I yeah, thought it no, was amazing. It, you know, I, Phil to Danny to Jason to Matt to D Emily to Doc Jake and uh, Doc. Yep. Phil, his original and, uh, story. Jeff and Jeff, who all came all and helped guys. us with sound and did yep. the sound for like we had good sound. Good like probably yeah, the he best used sound. his equipment. It was good stuff. Best sound we had. Yep. I mean, it's a pretty controlled environment. Yeah, it was. Uh, and and, and that, that was another thing that uh, we had one day to film that inside, yeah. and. Um, that if you ever done film before, that's not always possible. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh, we had to get it right. We had to get it down, and um, that was one of the most efficient shots we ever had. 
that was like I was like, yeah. all right, set up, boom, roll, cut, boom, yeah. stop, and it, it just went now very how smooth. Now, how much planning did you do for the sh- for the for the individual scenes and dialogue? Even though it's in the one set, you still oh, it's still tons of planning because it's all about set it up. And so we ended up getting there as early as we could in the morning. I I don't remember exactly what time it was, but um, you know, we uh, we set up for like four hours right before any any of the actors. And we all there. do that. Everybody, everybody helps. Yep. And uh, before any of the actors get there, and uh, and I do little storyboards that I always, I always do before any of my shots, just to make sure that yeah, this mm. is the this is the angle I want first. This is the angle I want next, and then um, and I went over those with Doc. Right. And so we uh, we had to set and up Jeff probably. And yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Jason for the for the shots. We went. Oh sure. Jeff was just worried about sound, so he had to make sure that he all his equipment was in the right spots that sure. wouldn't interfere with the shots and wouldn't uh, wouldn't get any kind of weird echoes or anything like that, you mm-hmm. know. And um, but the uh, and and we should just since we're talking about set building and the setup and all that, the thankless work, the often unseen member, yep. Steve Orling. Steve Orling, yeah, yeah. We can't forget him. No, no. I mean, uh, we couldn't do the film. Yeah, he's. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's always he's yeah he's uh he's our workhorse and uh <laughs> i think he uh he provided you know like anything we needed electricity yep like steve we need power over here steve we need steve we need steve we need steve we need yeah i mean it's yeah. constant yep <laughs> no, no, and, uh, yeah we, we we uh we couldn't do it without him and um and we might have had some other help too i don't remember yeah most likely. Uh, I know Phil was helping the the original uh, author. I don't know if Frank was there for that one. Not sure. Because Frank helped us with Virtue. Yep. Um, so I'm not sure if he helped us with that one or not. But there was, I know there was other people, too, that helped out right. a little bit, too. Yeah, as we uh, stayed, there was another room, a bigger room, like yeah. a cafeteria kind of room yep. on the other, down the hall. And we set that up as a uh, And that was nice. We actually room. had a lot of off-room right. area that we could. For makeup do stuff and yeah. just put our stuff and get ready and that was nice you know it, yeah it was really that was really it was a really nice location you know what that told me we should do, we should be doing more indoor shoots <laughs> 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 we tend to do outdoor shoots a lot we we actually did yeah and that's uh that's kind of funny um that's that's jason's fault because he wants action Oh, and who doesn't? You know, so as a viewer, that's what I want too. <laughs> that's uh, you know, so that's uh, he wants fighting and actions, and that's that's mm. outdoor stuff and yeah. for the most part. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll do a quiet drama someday. That's all indoors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we uh, ever get the bug again. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole. Nother, yeah, I'm a little a little too old for that right now. <laughs> but, but there's uh, so many films that we're gonna go over. So I yeah. think in future weeks, what's Pick, let's do virtue. Ah, uh, virtue would be great. We could do uh, that one, or we could do our fellow countrymen. Oh, or maybe we wait till closer to an election to do that one. I don't know. Nah. But <laughs> but, uh, nah let's. Um, and uh, yeah. So yeah, whatever you. Uh, and then I think we'll finish the series out with uh, the Killing Hand. Yeah, that's um, and it, so we're kind of going backwards in time, uh, for that. So if, if we're gonna go backwards in time, we should do virtue next. All right, let's do yeah. virtue next. So I hope you guys had fun hearing our stories, watching the film. I'm going to play the film um, on the way out so you guys all have enough time for your 8 o'clock yep. shows. <laughs> right. And, uh, of course, oh, if you have any questions, ask away. Yeah, I know. Put them in the, in the comments. You know, ask. Um, and there's a playlist, a public playlist on my channel. With It's called Films or Movies or something. Yep. They're all there. So, yep. you know, anytime you want, you don't got to wait. Just go watch them all. All right. Boom. And, uh, hey, Metalhead Hippie. What's going on, man? Jeff does hey. a um, – <laughs> Jeff is amazing. He's this, this cool, hip and slick dude in Alaska. That's his phrase. And uh, he plays everybody's music in the community. Nice. So, like, you write a song, Jeff's going to play it. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Rody Jam. Jam Cave, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Well, we're gonna play the film so you guys can get on with your lives. But you now, before we leave, Jared, uh, you got something to announce? Yeah, I do. I do uh, book reviews. I mostly fantasy book reviews on now my own channel. This is new. This is a new YouTube channel. Yes, uh, at 
the fantasy drink. And I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, put a link in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm just starting up with uh, with the doing that. And so you come check us out and let me know what you think. And uh, I'll be uh, glad to hear from you. <laughs> right. So thanks, Rody. Thanks, Janice. Thanks, Metalhead Hippie, Jeff. Thanks, Johnny Bean. Um, you guys are all awesome. I think Thank I said you. Janice. <laughs> so I'm glad you guys showed up. Rody's Jam Cave. Cool, man. Dave. Great to see you. I'll see you this weekend. All right, let's play it out. my cannons up to that ridge. Why'd you do that? Because your guys are down in that field there. But you can't see those guys. They're right there. No, look, the hill hides them from your artillery. Well, then they just decided to go up there anyway. Fine. Perhaps a spy gave away their position. A military operation involves deception. Just have to bring my forces in here. Ooh, I'm gonna crush you. Draw them in with the prospect of gain. Take them by confusion. Only a fool would fall for that. Oh no! Let's do something else. Why? Do you know any real soldiers? Not like these guys, but real enlisted men. Um, well I think one of my cousins is in the cavalry. The 11th or the 21st? I have no idea. He said they were at the Battle of Sherman last year. That would be the 21st. Yeah, he said half their platoon died. He's in prison now, something about stolen boots. My father told me wars are ugly things, a last resort. Military action is important to the nation. If the people want it. The people should trust in what their leaders want. <laughs> Do you ever see any of our other friends? Not with the classes, training, and other stuff. They just get all weird. Hey, I know. Let's sneak out after dinner tonight. I know a way under the wall that nobody's found yet. Rue, don't you understand? I can't do that stuff anymore. I have responsibilities. A thousand. Shut up! Not you, too. You're the only real friend I've got, okay? Sorry. Use anger to throw them into disarray. Stop that! <clears throat> we have more important matters at hand. Yes, time to go, Ru. Of course. We'll need more forces at this point. Can we hold the line for the day? Of course. I have my doubts. Do not doubt, and one day you'll have enough to drive them back. How? Once you take the valley, you'll be reinforced. We'll sacrifice too many men with such bait. That won't leave any forces for me. Uncle, how many men in that prison where Ruth's cousin is held? At least 3,000. Give them the semblance of soldiers and deploy them to the valley at the appropriate time. What do I tell them? Whatever you need to. I'll be in my rooms. It's barbaric. Battles are lost or won before they are fought. This will give us victory. Then you can give the orders! <laughs>